So here's the latest version of my animation, and you'll notice there's quite a few changes. So I've squished the world map a bit to fit this table in on the side, and I'm just tracking selected countries. So, and uh, and I've got the now I've got deaths recovered and mortality radio buttons as well, so you can track how they're going and graph how they're going. And I've got some extra buttons and a slider, so I've changed things around quite a lot. So now you can just drag on it and slide all the way through, and see how things changed. And the other thing I've done is I've changed the maximum dot size from a radius of 50 to a radius of 25, so I've halved it, okay? So, because uh, there's a lot of big dots later on, <laughs> as you'll see. Okay, so as we step through the data, you'll see China's growing and growing, and then it slows down a lot. The last few weeks, it's really slowed down and, uh, and, and virtually stopped. M meanwhile, other countries, especially Italy and Europe and Iran, uh, have accelerated their growth of cases. So you see the, see the cases going up? Okay, quickly. And China's dot isn't even changing size. Okay, so, and then there's a table here to back that up. You can see China was 80,000, 81,000 nearly on the 15th of, on Saturday, the 15th of March, 14th of, Sunday the 15th of March. Um, they were 15, 81,000. If I go back two weeks, one, two, you'll see the 79,000. Okay, so they've only gone up two thousand or less than two thousand. Uh, in uh, well, actually, just uh, not even eleven hundred in two, in the last two weeks. Whereas if we look at Italy, sixteen hundred and ninety four. They've gone from sixteen hundred ninety four to twenty four thousand. So the data might be right, um, but also maybe it's wrong. Maybe China has excellent. Uh, confinement process to confine people to quarantine and Italy, Italy's very lax or was very lax and uh, so that's why things have exploded in Italy and China stayed very very constant over the last few weeks or else maybe China isn't perhaps telling us telling the truth and uh, and I've got no idea which one it is so let's look at the deaths as well let's go back to the start this is the number of deaths and if I drag the slider forwards through the dates you'll see China's growing quickly and then Right at the end, right in the last couple of weeks, Italy's gone from nothing to massive death deaths. Okay, if I go back two weeks, you see there's none, or well, the circle's not even visible, it's so small. Uh, the data's actually uh, 34 deaths two weeks ago, and then now they've got 1,800 deaths. So that's a massive explosion in deaths. Hmm. Okay, and again, China over the last two weeks has gone from... 2,872 deaths to 3,203 deaths. So that's only a small change, relatively speaking. That's only a change of just over 300. Okay. Whereas Italy's changed by oof, over 1,700. <laughs> okay. So that's uh, again very, very different to what we're seeing in Italy. And let's look at the recovered. Let's go back and look at the recovered. And we'll go through the data, slide it forward, and you'll see the number of recovered cases is just growing in Italy, uh, sorry, in China, but growing very slowly in other countries. So there are quite a few recovered cases in other countries, but the vast bulk are in China, which is again indicating that China's got good quarantine and care procedures set in place for, the, for their uh, population. And I knew a whole bunch of new hospitals were built in very quick time, so China is taking care of their population and uh, forcing quarantine on people, which Okay, might seem harsh from the outside, but it's keeping the disease from spreading. Now let's look at the mortality rates. This is where it gets a bit, a bit shocking. So the first day of data available on John Hopkins University website is for the 22nd of January, Wednesday the 22nd of January. And by then there was already 548 confirmed cases in China, 17 deaths and 28 recovered. But there's also cases in other countries. There was one in the US, two in Thailand, one in South Korea, two in Japan. So it was already in other countries by that stage. And that's why China had to start uh, being more open about their data instead of keeping everything under wraps inside their country, which is very, very naughty. But anyway, so we'll, we'll step through the data and we'll see the mortality rates explode. And there is a good reason for that, don't panic. Just see, let's just step through it a little bit. We'll go through, we'll go back to the start and go forward two weeks. Okay, see how the circles are quite back a week, forward a week, see how the circles are already quite big? And uh, and that's because countries are having problems determining what recovered means, or, or countries are being slow to count people as recovered. 
when, when does the disease run its course? You know, at, at, the, at the end of the time, people are either dead or recovered. How do you tell when the end is? You know, uh, dead's easy, but when do you tell someone's recovered? You know, they might still have symptoms and things, but they might be on the mend. Do you count them as recovered then, or do you count them recovered when they're fully mended and back to work or whatever? Okay, so it is hard for people to count when they're recovered. So that's why the mortality rate explodes early on, <laughs> because the number of recovered is still very slow, very low. People aren't being counted as recovered yet. Okay, so when we go forward through the data more, you'll see it start to uh, normalise out a bit more. And here we're seeing that there's a lot of high mortality rate in Perth, Australia, um, in the USA, in Italy, in Iran, and around the place. And if we go right to the end of the data, so this is the last day of data I've got, which is the 15th of March, you can see the mortality rates. So the US, according to the way I'm doing mortality rate calculations, where I'm dividing um, deaths divided by the number of deaths plus the number of recovered. In other words, the mortality rate is after the disease has run its course. When you're either counted as dead or recovered, um, that's when it's run its course. So it's the number of deaths divided by the deaths plus recovered. Okay, that's how I'm calculating the mortality rate. So at this stage, because the US has been very slow to count people as recovered, and rightly so, they've, they've been cautious, they seem to have a mortality rate of 84%, which is very inflated. Okay, and the UK, very inflated. But by the time, by time all these cases here are either counted as dead or recovered, um, uh, you know, the, these rates will be much lower. On the other hand, um, when you look at Italy, 43% death rate. We've had 1,809 deaths and only 2,335 candidates recovered so far. So almost half the people in Italy have died by the time they've recovered or died, by the time, by the, time the disease has run its course. In Australia, fairly high, 11.5%. Maybe Australians are a little bit uh, more conservative and counting recoveries early. I, I know there were six deaths overnight, so this is going to jump quite a bit overnight here. It's going to be um, 9 out of 23, which is going to be set up quite a bit. And China has got only a 4.6% death rate, or mortality rate. Okay, so maybe China's counting recoveries early, or maybe China's counting recoveries on time, and everyone else is just slow. So maybe those, maybe that 4.6% is correct, or maybe, you know, is China telling the truth? You've got to wonder, don't you? Especially when you see the confirmed cases, it's changed so little in the last two weeks. Or even three weeks, you know, that circle's barely changed, whereas other places have exploded. And when you see the number of deaths, that's that's barely changed in the last two weeks, but it's exploded in other places. And uh, when you see the recovered cases, when you see hardly anyone else is counting recoveries, but China's counting a lot of their recoveries. So, again, it makes you question, uh, question the data a bit. You know, how, how accurate is the data? How accurate is people's reporting? And... Uh, and uh, really, I'm, I'm really quite worried. Is China telling the truth? That's the big question I've got at the moment. Anyway, that's my simulation so far. I'm actually going to release this version onto my my webpage. So the webpage is in the description. Go to my Moose Software Valley webpage, and I'll upload this version there, so you can play with it and have a go as well, and step through the data. And I'll be uploading subsequent releases as I go. So the source data, the source code is not available. And I've already explained why that is, because uh, I'm still polishing the code. And also, um, I want to make it a, an assignment project for my students. Okay, so the source code is not available, but, but I'm releasing the binary or the executable Java version, Java file, the Java file. Okay, so if you've got the Java runtime installed on your machine, you can, you can run the tool. Okay, and, um, and I'll be releasing updates as I go. So I'll, I'll release another version in a, in a, in a, you know, a week or so's time. And um, or else I'll just release the data files so you can update this version with the new data files. Anyway, keep an eye on my Moose's Software Valley webpage. That's that's the place to keep an eye on. Okay, and uh, also on YouTube as well on my YouTube channel. Okay, so I hope this video was useful. Again, I don't want to raise any alarm. I don't want to cause any panic. Um, but I think that I think the situation is going to get worse before it gets better. And uh, I think we might be uh, perhaps. Uh, there, there might be something going on here with the data coming out of China. I'm not sure. It's hard to say. This has increased so slowly lately, and uh, and the number of deaths is so low that it does make me question the data. It is quite different, quite a different trend to what's happening in other countries. But again, there might be good reason for that. China has built several new hospitals, at least, to cater for the uh, coronavirus victims, 
and uh, that's, that's very commendable and they do have quite strict quarantine procedures and again I think that's commendable as well so China is doing the right things so maybe the data is accurate I, I really don't know I don't have enough information okay and I'm certainly not casting aspersions on anybody I'm just I'm just showing you the trends and saying you know if this is what's happening is this really right that's all I'm saying so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video and uh, talk to you again soon